I'd created a ransom, rancid realm inside my sleeping bag and arrived at a crossroad, brimming with a montage of the poor choices I'd made leading up to this moment. When I became a born-again Christian at 17, I thought I'd found the cure to the obsessive compulsive cocktail brewing in my brain, that howling voice that told me I didn't deserve happiness. Everyone at church told me my anxiety and depression were choices and that the devil was just trying to steal my joy. <laughs> and I believed that because it was an easier pill to swallow rather than realizing I would probably need to swallow pills for the rest of my life. <laughs> but with enough prayer and devotion, Jesus would make it all go away. Or at the very least, he'd be a distraction and my anxiety would function more like one of those idiots trying to get on the news by running behind the reporter rather than completely stealing the spotlight. I felt guilty for questioning God's plans for me. My prayers were going unanswered, so I took a huge leap of faith. It was spring break, and our youth group was going on a spiritual journey down to a poverty-stricken town in Mexico on their annual mission trip, which sounded about as appealing to me as an enema. <laughs> However, my fellow youth group members had been on this trip before and said it was incredible. A common Christian phrase is where God guides, God provides. <laughs> and at that moment, the saintly slogan spoke to me. Not to mention the fact that I couldn't turn down to the opportunity to worship God in a vacant field because that's just what good people do. <laughs> the next few days were spent rehearsing our Jesus saves mime routine. The language barrier <laughs> certainly wasn't going to stop us from spreading the good word. One week later, 15 of us filled a large white van and set off for the border. We pulled into a jack-in-the-box drive through for lunch on the road. This was my last chance for American food for a while, so I ordered my usual sourdough jack, large curly fries, and an extra large Diet Coke. I sat snugly next to Brianna, the prom queen in our youth group. She was the type of girl that warranted a slow motion scene in which her hair was blowing from a non-existent breeze and Dreamweaver plays. <laughs> her thighs, even completely flattened, were the size of my arm. The only makeup she wore was bubblegum lip smackers and that was just for the taste. <laughs> she was the Jesus is my BFF kind of Christian. I looked at Brianna's dressing list salad in her lap. Is that all you're having? I said. My food was gone, and I was feeling around the bag for loose fries on the bottom. <laughs> she informed me that gluttony was a big no-no in God's book, to which I continued to blindly pillage the paper bag and fry pursuit. <laughs> she munched on her rabbit food while I suppressed junk food fueled belches. This is my third year. It's like a spiritual makeover, she bragged. <laughs> Wow, I can't wait to see how God is going to use me, I said. <laughs> An hour after crossing the border, we parked in a dirt lot with several outhouses encompassing it. We set up our tents here, those are the bathrooms, and there's a spigot in the field over there if you need to wash your hair. Brianna continued as though she was on an episode of MTV's Cribs. <laughs> Julia Stiles, circa Save the Last Dance, was my idol. I lived in knockoff Adidas warm-ups. <laughs> in preparation for this trip, I got in cornrows. <laughs> I strongly felt that since we were going to a different country, my cornrows would send the message that I didn't see color or status. <laughs> but the actual message it sent was, I didn't have an honest friend in this world. <laughs> so unlike Brianna, I had no intentions of washing my hair. There's a group of people that brings our meals. It's nothing great, but that's not why we're here, right? Brianna continued. Oh, totally, you're totally right, I said. Want to share a tent? How? Brianna's invitation to share a tent with me didn't add up. I wasn't good looking or popular. And even in church, it's an unwritten rule that those people belong together. <laughs> but I wasn't getting any other offers. Yeah, thanks, I said. 
My duffel bag housed a hoarder's supply of baby wipes, drugstore Hawaiian body spray, toilet paper, trash bags, and extra rubber bands just in case my cornrows needed touching up. <laughs> Nobody warned me about the plumbing in Mexico. I never used public bathrooms. At school, I'd hold it until I got home, even if that meant a bladder infection. The idea of the millions of bacteria residing on every surface in a public restroom was crippling to me. I could handle germs in my own house because it was family filth. <laughs> but a 32 ounce Diet Coke rested in my bladder for the past few hours. <laughs> so I sized up the baby blue door, opened it and stepped inside. The scent of urine soaked feces and dead fish emanated from a dark hole. No <laughs> toilet seat covers. I stood lamenting over the potential diseases I could catch from the toilet seat, crouched atop the black hole with buckling knees as I tried to balance and I emptied my bladder. <laughs> Not an ideal way to pee, but nothing got on my clothes and I took pride in that. <laughs> we gathered for dinner in the early evening. I walked along the picnic table buffet as volunteers globbed canned pineapple, spam, and crackers onto my plate. Brianna led us in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so much for this delicious food and for this experience. I stared at my plate and back at the outhouses and connected the digestive dots. <laughs> there was no way I'd be able to number two it in one of those. And so I made what seemed like the most logical decision at the time and decided that for the duration of our trip, I wouldn't eat. <laughs> Therefore, I wouldn't poop. <laughs> you guys, I'm actually fasting so I can focus more on God, I said. <laughs> oh wow, good for you, that's awesome. I know how much you love to eat. <laughs> but you know what? God's going to bless you big time. Brianna was in full support of this decision, and I was hoping God would bless me with constipation. <laughs> After praise and worship, we headed to bed. The thing about camping in the middle of a city is that not everyone is turning in early to rest up for morning ministry. From continuous traffic, we quickly learned that Shaggy's It Wasn't Me was the number one song in Tijuana. <laughs> in this hip hop jam, Shaggy learned that his friend was caught creeping with the girl next door, and he advised his comrade to simply respond with, it wasn't me. <laughs> and while the other youth group members viewed this song as secular and sinful, it gave me a sense of familiarity and comfort. <laughs> Every day held the same events. Breakfast, worship, minister in the village, lunch, quiet time, dinner, worship, and my personal favorite, falling asleep to Shaggy's sweet melody. <laughs> it wasn't me. For three hours each day, I was a salesman for Jesus, trying to convince people that he was a wise investment in return for their soul. I had to approach strangers, start a personal conversation with them, and ask them what they needed prayer for. Hello, you have absolutely no idea who I am, but tell me how you're screwing up the most in your life. <laughs> then I'd put my hands on them and speak to God, which feels a lot like when you hug a person for longer than they're comfortable with. <laughs> The other evangelicals were ec ecstatic to be roaming the streets of Tijuana in pursuit of praying with strangers, but I was on day three without food, and my body needed to dispose of that jack-in-the-box waste. <laughs> I had a migraine that made even the faintest bit of light feel like my corneas were blistering. I was hungry and tired and livid, and so I decided that no one would notice if I just stayed back in the van. I'd already become an outsider because I was skipping meals, and God wasn't blessing me big time, like <laughs> Brianna had said. As the sun started to go down, I hopped out of the van, waited for the others to walk up, and opened the door, like I too just returned. It's a shame you gotta go back early. 
You're going to miss out on our last night of worship and the prayer service. Brianna was talking to the assistant youth pastor, Jason, whom I didn't hold a close relationship to, but we were civil. He'd driven separately from the rest of us and was apparently leaving a day early. A day early? A day early. (laughs) Meaning I didn't have to wait another 24 hours to take a crap. (laughs) As soon as we were back at the campsite, I approached Jason. Hey, so I'm not really feeling well, and I prayed about it. (laughs) And I just don't feel like God's calling me to stay here another night. And well, since you're leaving early, I was wondering if I could just ride up with you. I'm sorry to hear you're not well, but it's my job as assistant pastor to make sure you get all that you can out of this mission. The first time is always hard, but God brought you to it, and I'll bring you through it. (laughs) Go and join everyone at worship, kiddo, because right now, you know what's missing from church? I don't know. You are. He patted my back, and I reluctantly joined everyone for worship. The stabbing pains in my stomach nearly brought me to my knees. After worship concluded, we headed back to our tents. Everyone quickly nodded off, including Brianna. This trip had been a complete waste of time, and all I'd actually accomplished was horrific scalp sunburn from those (laughs) godforsaken cornrows. I slid into my sleeping bag and let out a sigh of relief. Soon, I'd be out of this hellhole and back where I belonged. And because Brianna was sleeping, and because I had no other choice, I started farting. (laughs) Not feminine little fluff farts. (laughs) Farting like I'd consumed an entire gallon of beans soaked in prune juice. It felt incredible. As though I'd taken this bodily function for granted until that moment. I continued smiling with every broken wind. And then a very deep, very assertive fart came like a breathy berry white (laughs) carrying a message saying hey girl you're not in charge anymore and a release (laughs) I hadn't intended on happening, and it wasn't stopping. (laughs) My bowels were evacuating, and it felt like I had fire ants crawling out of my ass. (laughs) The -the jack-in-the-box waste I'd held on to for days had taken up residence in the bottom of my warm-ups. And there I was, at that crossroad that was brimming with a montage of all the poor choices I'd made leading up to this moment. (laughs) Wiggling out of my sleeping bag, trying desperately not to do further damage, I wasn't done yet, and I couldn't unload the rest in that two-person tent. (laughs) With toilet paper and flashlight in hand, I unzip our tent and crawl out, my thighs rubbing my warm-ups together. Swishing of fabric on fabric, ping-ponging throughout the entire campsite, advertising my waddling silhouette, and just as I think I've arrived at the row of outhouses unnoticed, two boys from a different youth group are sitting in lounge chairs, reading their Bibles directly across from me. Look forward, look forward, look forward, keep your head down, they don't know why you're here, this is a natural bodily function. (laughs) God created us this way. (laughs) Oh, shit, what if they can hear my explosion from outside? (laughs) I fling open the outhouse door and lunge inside, take my toilet paper, and quickly begin manufacturing a fort, hoping to prevent any skin-on-seat contact, sit down, 
and deflate. <laughs> if this moment had a soundtrack, only the introductory African chanting from the Lion King <laughs> would have done it justice. Shining the flashlight on my pants, taking it all in, and realizing I left out a very crucial step in this process. Bringing clean pants with me. <laughs> I had two options. Number one, sprint pantless from the outhouse. <laughs> Or, <laughs> number two, wear the same feces-saturated pants. I reach down and slide the pants back up. <laughs> They're cold and sticky, caging my nether regions in a frigid prison. I want my life to turn into a scene from one of those old-timey black-and-white comedic movies with ragtime music playing in the background while I drag a snoring Brianna out of the tent, clean it up, and drag her back in. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. <laughs> but creeping into our tent, I slowly unzip my luggage with pants, underwear, trash bag, and baby wipes in hand. I strip down, putting the dirty clothing in the trash bag, remaining in the happy baby pose as I clean myself. <laughs> I toss the bag of dirty wipes and sadly part ways with my favorite pair of Adidas warm-ups. <laughs> I slide in my sleeping bag with clean clothing on, wiping sweat from my forehead. At least I'd hoped it was sweat. <laughs> and for the first time in days, I smiled, partly from the physical relief but mostly because I'd realized that I'd gone to ridiculous and painful measures, hoping God could fix something that wasn't broken in the first place. I wasn't a helpless little girl, and faith shouldn't mean feeling awful about who you are, chemical imbalances and all. I left my Christian guilt on the other side of the border, and if anyone were to find those fecal-stained warm-ups in Mexico, <laughs> I'd stick to the advice of Shaggy and say, it wasn't me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Esther Woodman.